Ladies and gentlemen, we have had our very own Yeti 160E here behind me for a little over a year now, and uh, put plenty of miles, tons of smiles, and gotta say there's really only one word to describe it. Planted, poppy, playful, aggressive, modern, balanced, confidence-inspiring. <laughs> In all seriousness, the Yeti 160E is an absolutely phenomenal electrified mountain bike. We have had an absolute blast on this bike. If you are really interested in all of the nitty gritty details and everything like that, we actually already made a 160E video when the bike was released a couple of years ago. Feel free to check out that video before if you're interested in those details. This video, we're gonna go a little more into the details of how this bike rides and our on-trail impressions and what it's been like to ride and live with for the last year or so. Before we jump into that, I will go over some of the brief details like the geometry and stuff like that. All right, so some of the basic details of the Yeti 160E. Spike is rolling on 29 inch wheels with 160 millimeters of rear travel paired with a 170 millimeter fork. That gives it a 64.5 degree head tube angle with a 78 degree effective seat tube angle. Spike has 446 millimeter chain stays with a 430 millimeter reach on the small, 460 reach on the medium, 480 reach on the large and 505 millimeter reach on the extra large bike. This bike is powered by the Shimano EP8 motor in the C1 build and the EP801 motors with the Turk builds. These motors offer a peak torque of 85 Newton meters and it does so with a 630 watt battery. This bike is based off of Yeti's Sixfinity six bar suspension platform that is proprietary and is the only bike that they offer with this platform. But enough about the specs and the little details, this video is all about how this bike rides. So we're gonna jump into that right now. I myself have been lucky enough to spend a good amount of time upon this very steed but someone else who has spent quite a bit of time on it as well is our man here in the California shop, Trevor. Hey guys, so I've been riding this 160E here for a little over a year and had a blast doing so. It's a really fun bike, it's a really fast bike. It kind of inspires confidence while you're riding downhill. Of course, it gives you a lot of assist uphill, which is great. Uh, Liam will recap stuff like that a little bit later. I think now we should get into the little nitty gritty details that you guys all really wanna know about. I'm here to represent the discerning possible buyer of a Yeti 160E and ask Trevor the hard questions because if you're looking to buy an IC bike, you probably wanna to talk to a guy who rides them all the time, has been working on them for 10 plus years since the original specialized e-bikes really <laughs> took popularity and people rode them and had warranty problems and things like that. Yeah, a lot so. of people uh, think that e-bikes are flawless and I'll tell you what, they're not. Every single bike that I've seen has had its uh, quirks. This is one that I've seen that doesn't have very many of those. The 160E and this particular Shimano motor, what do you think the warranty rate of these would be versus Bosch or Specialized? or some of the other bikes that you've encountered and the other motors you've encountered and worked on over the years? I would say it's very minimal compared to the other e-bike manufacturers out there, and specifically from the Shimano system. It's been pretty flawless in my experience. Maybe other people have different opinions, but from what I've seen personally, it's been pretty fantastic. As we all know, the Specialized Motors have all had belt issues and Bosch has their battery issues. And I really haven't had many issues with these bikes, which has been super fantastic to work on. And the some issues that have occurred Shimano and Yeti, support-wise, good, bad, reply to your emails on time? Yeah, Shimano's been really good with warranty. Yeti's been super good with warranty as well. They do a lot for us and they help me out a lot with, with issues that I do see on it. So yeah, I haven't really had any issues with that. The motor, mm -hmm. Shimano has got a little bit of a reputation for this clunky sound. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I rode this bike, I pretty much the every time I've ridden this bike, I didn't really notice it. And I'm kind of a, like a nitpicker with that stuff. I have not really ridden it in the cases where you mentioned you've heard it before, mm -hmm. which are kind of flatter sections. I'll let you talk to that. But yeah. when I rode this bike, I pretty much have ridden it straight uphill and straight downhill. And it's kind of like any other large e-bike. They make a little bit different noises than a normal bike without a motor does. But I didn't really notice a clunking noise. Some people have this motor's got a little bit of a reputation for that. However, I didn't notice it at all. And some people say they do notice it. And you explained to me one day in clear detail, certain times, certain these like flatty, how do you, how do you get the motor to make noise? At yeah, so when the motor's engaged and you are actually pedaling it, the e-bike is in drive. It's pretty quiet. You hear the motor whine a little bit, which is normal, but it's not clunking around or anything. Everything's going as planned. As soon as you kind of are coasting on something flat or downhill, it will clunk around a little bit. It's just a clutch inside there. And this is normal with every single e-bike that I've experienced so far. I've ridden many different e-bikes. It's a very normal thing. So hopefully it's 
manufacturers can fix that or address that in the future. Um, but that's something to expect with e-bikes across the board. So nothing, nothing to worry about too much. When you're riding downhill, it's something that you kind of just space out um, in your head eventually. And yeah. um, get does, the flow it's not state, really, you know not, I mean? yeah, yeah. get in the flow state. Um, there's a lot of things happening at once and that's kind of the least of my worries when I'm when I am riding as long as you kind of expect that noise to be normal. I guess that clunking which it's got the reputation for what that noise exactly is if I correct me if I'm wrong but it's it's basically as you pedal the cranks the bike has to figure out when to engage the motor and so if you're kind of moving like this as you're going through rough terrain the bike's unsure do I engage do I not engage do I engage do I not engage because it wants to be quick on the engagement that's nice that's yep. a good feature but it doesn't want to be too slow on the engagement so there's kind of that slight middle ground I've kind of felt that with all e-bikes yeah they all do it. They like all they do all it. have that same thing in their brain where they have to know when in that pedal stroke should it engage the motor, right? Exactly. It's just an inherent problem that e-bikes have and uh, it's just something to accept and get used to. And yeah, Yeti has developed a lot of parts on the bike that do well for cable management as far as cables entering and exiting the bike, like integration on the chain guide that make it so that the cables aren't moving around on the bike, Keep, makes, keeps the bike super quiet. So the other thing, how much do you weigh and when you ride this bike, about how many miles and thousands feet of climbing do you get on a ride or on a charge? I'm a pretty average human. I weigh 180 pounds and in general, I can get around 30 miles, around 4,000 feet of climbing. This is in between boost mode and trail mode, and sometimes even eco mode, depending if I'm trying to save battery. If you are in eco mode, you can get pretty decent ride in that, I'd probably say 40, 50 miles if you're really trying to push it. It's a long ride. Um, that's a big ride. In general, <laughs> yeah. I, I keep it in boost or trail mode. Once I'm down in battery, I'm kind of over the ride anyway. Kind of want to yeah. be off the bike anyway, so. It's a lot of time. Um, yeah, it's kind of a perfect amount for me. Speaking of batteries, you can swap this battery on and off and buy a battery, correct? Yep, it's a uh, hot swappable, so you can just with the formula allen key you can uh, pop the battery out of the bottom of the bike instantly and on the fly and if you want to purchase another battery if, let's say you're doing laps at a bike park or at a local trailhead where you're going to go back to your car you can put a battery in and keep on going running in boost mode the whole day and just have pure fun on this battery and on this motor in particular now that you've been on this bike and we've all been kind of riding this bike ruthlessly for over a year mm -hmm. have you noticed anything that's abnormal in terms of wear and tear or the battery longevity or anything that needs to be replaced more than any other motor or no, battery would be not really again we haven't really had any issues with this bike as far as the e-bike components on it or even the components from Yeti they've all been pretty solid and which is uh, saying a lot because we do push these bikes pretty hard and with other bikes that we see yeah there's there's generally some issues that that arise here and there they're not flawless though one a one defect on this bike that I learned about, which I thought was kind of annoying, was the charge port location. Yeah, the uh, charge port location is right above the motor on the back of the back side of the bike. When you are spinning the crank, you cannot spin the crank fully because it will hit the charger it and break it. it. Yeah, and it runs into it. So I think something that could have been better with this bike is having the charger port uh, maybe up by the on off button or up on the top of the bike so you can actually work on the bike or move the bike while it's charging you kind of have to kind of let it set put while it's charging yeah which isn't the end of the world but it's something that could be fixed something to pay attention to because if you have your bike plugged in and it gets knocked over and the crank spins and whacks into the charger, then all of a sudden you yeah. broke that charge port. Ask us how we know about that. Yeah, <laughs> we have done that. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, I've, I've definitely been impressed with the way Shimano and Yeti have sort of backed up this bike. And uh, I mean, Shimano's notorious for making super high quality stuff that lasts a long time and has low warranty rates. So kind of a good brand when it comes to brands that make motors. Yeah, something that's very impressive to me is how much R&D Yeti and Shimano have both put into this bike bike and continue to put in this bike they have a whole race team that uh races the eews or eewr they really put a lot of money and effort and time into racing these bikes at the highest level with mick hannon and ryan gilchrist and really making sure that these bikes can be pushed to the absolute limit and perform at the highest level last but not least the bike weight, this one with this build kit, 51 pounds, I yeah, think Yeah, this said. one comes in at 51 yeah. pounds, and this is for the C1 build. Um, for the T-Series build, uh, I'd imagine it's probably around 50 pounds. Not a huge weight savings, but that is generally 
the standard for e-bikes is around hovering around 50 pounds. For the big full power boys. For a big full power yeah. e-bike. That's like a nice full power e-bike above probably that $8,000 price point. Yeah. Just 50, for context. 50 pounds yeah. is what you're gonna expect in general from a full power e-bike. And this is not really something you feel while you're climbing the bike, obviously, because it's yeah. you're getting Powerful. assist. Um, but it is something you have to adapt to when you're riding down the hill because yeah. it's a little bit heavier. But it's also, there's some advantages to that. It feels pretty nice and planted on the downhill. And yeah. um, if you can figure out how to ride it, get it, you adapt to it a little bit, it's a ton of fun. When I first rode this bike, when I was climbing on it, I just was kind of grinning ear to ear. And I almost crashed at one point because as I was climbing, I didn't quite realize that the front wheel was like this much off the ground. Has that ever happened to you? No. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm climbing and the, the thing is just doing this slight wheelie and I'm like, oh, the bars aren't even turning. And then all of a sudden I was like, whoa, whoa. And it caught and I was, oh, I was just cracking up. These I, bikes are I very- I was goofballing too much. Once you figure out how to wheelie these bikes, it is fun to wheelie and yeah. you can wheelie up hills and without much effort, that's just it's just a great time. Yeah, weight on an e-bike is probably not something you wanna to be totally concerned about. If you want a full power, you're gonna be around 50 pounds for a high-end nice e-bike. If you wanna to go to the lighter weight side of things, those get down to that like 38 to 42 pound range, which is a totally different bike because it's very different range and different battery size. Yeah, different riding weight for different styles of riding. Yeah, totally. Killer. Well, send it back to Jared. Wow. Somebody else who has been lucky enough to spend some time upon this bike is our very own Liam. He's back. That was crazy. That was crazy. I love it how that works. Liam, what do you think about the 160E? Trevor and you have already crushed it with all the buzzwords. It's playful, it's poppy, it's planted. Um, no, but in all honesty, the suspension design on this bike works extremely well. Yeti did develop the suspension design all around e-bikes and the e-bike platform. So it's different than all the other bikes. And one thing that is really cool in this bike is the progressive flip chip. So it can go from 25, 30, and 35% progressivity just by flipping out this, this chip right here, which I think really plays to how they wanted this bike to be ridden and how it was designed. So that was definitely something that caught my eye on this bike. And yeah, I mean, it just works really well. Totally. Yeah, totally, definitely. Okay. That, that flip chip, how you can move the position to even keep the progressivity with a coil shock is very cool. And that's a very nice little design feature that they implemented there. As far as the bike goes, it's definitely on the top of my list for e-bikes and especially how it rides downhill. It's really hard to beat this design. Agreed. This thing is a downhill machine. Well, Liam, Thank you very much for joining us. And that just about wraps this one up. If you have any questions, please feel free to head our line. We have an email that has Bike Nerd standing by, not 24 seven, but about as 24 seven as you could possibly want. And also please call us anytime we have, like I said, Bike Nerds on staff ready to answer any questions you might have. Also, please hit the link in the description below for all the nitty gritty. And also. <laughs> Hit the link below for all the nitty gritty details on this bike, including the kits, which seems to be changing constantly, as well as the geometry, pricing, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.